There will never be a perfect time. The perfect time is always now because your comfort zone is where your dreams go to die. You have to jump off the ledge and know that the parachute will open. You can't open the parachute before you jump off the ledge. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to conquer the little voice inside of your head by not negotiating with your mind. And I'm gonna teach you how to smash that little voice inside of your head and why is that important? Because everything that you want, the life that you truly want is on the other side of all of the fears that that little voice brings up inside of your head. Now, why? Why do we want to do this? Because everything beautiful in your life, the perfect version of your life, the you that you know that you can be deep down inside, lives on the other side of that fear, lives on the other side of the comfort zone that you are currently stuck in. And Will Smith said something amazing, and he said, God puts everything amazing on the other side of fear which means the only way to get to the perfect life, the life that you want for you, your family, your spouse, your friends, the one that you've truly desired and the one that when you get to your deathbed, you say, yes, this is what I wanted. I'm so proud of this life. It all is on the other side of fear. It's all outside of your comfort zone. So if you have fears that are holding you back from the life that you truly want, I'm gonna tell you this, there's only one thing in this world that you should fear. The only thing that you should fear is fear. Yes, you heard me right. Fear, fear. Don't fear anything else. Fear, fear. Because living a life captive inside of fear, captive inside of your comfort zone, is not a life fully lived. And the only thing that scares the crap out of me is not what people think about me, not being rejected, not hearing no, not other people's opinions, not failure, not success, none of those things. The only thing that really scares the crap out of me is not living a life fully lived, is getting to my deathbed and seeing that I could have done more and wishing that I could have done more to make my life better, everyone else's life's a better and lives better in the world's life better, if it's possible for me. So the only thing that I'm truly afraid of is fear. Because I know fear is one of the worst things in the world. If every person in this world was able to step out of their comfort zone and was able to get past their fears, think of how amazing this life would be, how amazing this world would be if we all just got past our fears and created the perfect version of our lives. Because we all have that little voice inside of us. And that little voice is either your biggest fan or it's your biggest critic. And for most of us, it's our biggest critic. It's the one that says, you can't do that. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not enough, period. You're not fit enough. You're not worthy of success. You're not worthy of love. Go back to bed. Don't work out today. Sleep in. Ah, you should take a nap in the middle of the day. Don't make those cold calls. Hey, you know what you should do? Sit on Instagram for an hour. Don't get off the couch. That's the little voice that's inside of your head. And that thing inside of your head is holding you back from the life you want. Nothing else. It's not the economy. It's not the president. It's not your spouse. It's not your parents. It's not your past. It's not anybody else around you. The only thing standing between you and the life that you want is fear and that little voice inside of your head that just makes up a bunch of BS fear. And it keeps us in our comfort zone. Why is it? Because I like to, if you've been listening to me for a while, you've heard me say this before, but I like to look at everything that's happening to me present day and holding me back and my clients back and people who I've coached back as if it was a million years ago. And we're talking about cavemen and cave women and go, why is this thing? Why does fear, why does it exist inside of us? Let's rewind back to a million years ago. And fear is what kept our species alive. And I like to think back to cavemen, right? Your comfort zone is basically the modern day equivalent of a cave. Why did tribal people go inside of caves? Because there was only one entrance and one exit. You are completely protected around it. So inside of this cave, you're safe. You're safe inside of this cave. You don't have to worry about death. You don't have to worry about attack. You don't have to worry about anything because you're safe inside of this cave. But the moment you step out of the cave, 
is where you have the possibility of attack and the possibility of death. So now you have to rise. Over the past two million years, million years, our brains haven't changed that much. And there's still a part of our brain that exists from millions of years ago. It's in the back of your head. It's called the amygdala. And the amygdala creates fear so that you can stay safe. So it creates the fear because your brain only cares about safety. And if it only cares about safety, it only cares about actually keeping you alive. Doesn't care if you're happy. Doesn't care if you're successful. Doesn't care if you get the life that you truly want or you're rich and famous and successful. Doesn't care about any of, doesn't even care if you're happy. It cares about your survival. And so the amygdala, because of the fact that you don't have to worry about being attacked by a lion, the amygdala creates fears to keep you in your comfort zone, AKA your cave. Because we have the feeling of if I step out of my comfort zone, I might be out of safety. I might not be as safe outside of my comfort zone as I am inside of my comfort zone, which is the same as I might not be as safe outside of the cave as I, say, as I am inside of the cave. And so what do we do? We create a mental cave a comfort zone to stay in. Now, you know that if you step out of your comfort zone, AKA step out of your cave, because you've never made $100,000 before and you wanna make $100,000 this year, you know you're not gonna die by making $100,000. But that little fear-based amygdala that exists inside of your brain isn't smart enough to know that when you do something that you've never done before, you don't have the threat of death. Make sense? And so when you understand the way your brain works, you can start to make plans to get past it. This is why I think understanding the brain is so freaking important. And most people don't look at it is because when you can understand the way the brain works, then you can work past it and make plans to get yourself out of your comfort zone, to get past your fears, to stop worrying. So that's why the little voice inside of our head exists. The little voice inside of our head exists to keep us inside of our comfort zone inside of our cave so that we don't have to worry about death. Even though, you know, if you step out of your comfort zone and ask someone on a date, you're not going to die. If you step out of your comfort zone and try to make $100,000 this year, you're not going to die. But once again, that reptilian part of your brain, the old, 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 old part of your brain that still exists, doesn't know that. So what do we do? Now that we know it exists, we know how it exists, we know why it exists, what do we do? We freaking destroy that thing. That's what we do. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. Now, let me tell you how to destroy the little voice inside of your head. Whenever it pops up and says, you shouldn't do this. Whatever that thing is, you have to go at it full force. I notice it all of the time. Little voice pops up inside of my head and says, hey, you know, don't do the dishes right now. You can do them later. I'm like, oh, God, now I got to do the freaking dishes. I didn't want to do the damn dishes, but now I got to do the dishes. Okay, fine. I'll do the dish. Little voice pops up inside of my head and says, hey, you don't have to work out today. I'm like, mm, now I got to work out. Because when that little voice pops up, the only way to get rid of it is to go through it. So it shows me what I need to work on. Okay, looks like I gotta work out today. I wake up, go brush my teeth, get myself ready. The bed's right there, the bed's unmade. And the little voice inside of my head says, ah, oh, you don't have to make the bed today. Oh, now I gotta make the freaking bed because I've got to do I've got to consistently do what that little voice tells me not to do. I've got to go through it. The only way out is through. And so whenever the voice pops up, I gotta do it. If it tells me I shouldn't work out, I've gotta work out. If it tells me I shouldn't make the bed, I've gotta make the bed. If I change a shirt and I throw a shirt on the bed and that little voice is like, oh man, hey, later on, you're gonna have to put that on a hanger. I'm like, Ugh. I can't wait till later. I've got to do it now. The little voice says, hey, don't make cold calls. I got to sit down and make 50 freaking phone calls. Why? Because I refuse to listen to that little voice. If the little voice says, hey, go back to sleep, I wake up. If the little voice says, hey, man, you shouldn't take a cold shower, even though that you should, I'm going to destroy the little voice by going through the little voice. The only way out is through. And when you notice the little voice, you must go against it. 
Whatever it tells you to do, you must go against it. If it tells you you're not good enough, you better find a way to, that you are good enough. If it tells you that you're not smart enough, you need to start thinking of ways that you're smart. If it tells you you're not pretty enough, you need to go look at yourself in the mirror and talk about all the beautiful things that you love about yourself. Whatever it tells you, you have to go at the exact opposite. If it tells you you're not fit enough, you need to go and tell it how you're going to work out every single day and you're gonna you know, what to do whatever it is that you need to do, create the health that you need to. If it tells you to go back to sleep, you've gotta wake up. You've got to fight the little voice inside of your head. And I'm gonna tell you why. You don't negotiate with your mind because your mind, once again, is a safety mechanism. It is amazing for keeping you alive, but it's terrible if you allow it to run your life. So you've gotta literally go through whatever it is. The only way to get rid of it is to try to defeat it. There is no other option. You can't think your way through all of the little voices and the, the, the things that it says inside of your head that holds you back. You can't think your way out of it. The only way to do it is through action. If it says, hey, Rob, just go back to sleep. I get it every, every, every freaking morning. I get it. It pops up and says, hey man, hit the alarm. <laughs> you know, go back to sleep, no big deal. You don't have to do anything for the next 15 minutes. Sleep in. And when that voice pops up, all right, looks like I've got to wake up. And the little voice says, hey man, just take a, take a warm shower today. You deserve it. You've taken cold showers for a long time. I'm like, you know what? I've got to take a cold shower. I don't take a cold shower because I love cold showers. I take cold showers because I consistently need to do things that I don't enjoy doing to then prove my mind wrong and to take control over it. If it doesn't suck, we don't do it, right? So you've got to figure out a way to go through it. The obstacle that's standing in front of you is the way. There's a book that was by Ryan Holiday called The Obstacle is the Way. Basically, the synopsis of the entire thing is this. Whatever it is that's standing in front of you is the way to your enlightenment, is the way to the life that you want. So if that little voice says, Rob, don't work out today, then I have to work out because the perfect version of me is on the other side of that workout. If it says, don't make cold calls today, I've got to make 50 phone calls. Why? because it's on the other side. It is literally, here's the beautiful thing about the little voice inside of your head. Even though it sucks, it's showing you blatantly right in front of your face what it is that you need to do in order to create the life that you want. It's obvious, once you see it, you can't unsee it. The obstacle is the way. You cannot listen to it. You cannot negotiate with it. You have to go through the obstacle. You have to go through the little voice. The only way out is through through the obstacle because your comfort zone is where your dreams go to die. Let me say that again. Your comfort zone is where your dreams go to die. You can't wait until you're comfortable before you take action because you'll never be comfortable. You can't wait until the perfect moment before you go out and take action and create the life that you want to because there will never be a perfect moment. You can't wait till you're ready because you'll never actually be ready. You have to jump off the ledge and know that the parachute will open. You can't open the parachute before you jump off the ledge. You've got to jump and that's the only way to do it. The only way out is through. There will never be a perfect time. The perfect time is always now because every time will be imperfect. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I've got to wait because I'm not ready yet. Oh, I've got to wait because I've got to do X, Y, Z. Now is the time. It shows you the obstacle that's in front of you. And the obstacle is your mind. And the only way is through that obstacle. You have to literally seek discomfort. You can't be comfortable because if you stay inside of your comfort zone, your life will be exactly the same forever. And here's the thing. I know that if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, whatever it is, however you're consuming this piece of content, you want more. You know that you have more potential in you. So you don't want to stay in your comfort zone. You've got to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. If you don't do anything different, your life will not change. You will get the exact same life day after day after day after day. Today will look like yesterday. Yes, you know, tomorrow will look like today. It'll be the same day every single day, like Groundhog Day, it'll be just be a different date. And if you fast forward 10 years, you'll be in the exact same place. I know that some people listening to this right now are in the exact same position that they were 10 years ago. 
And the reason why is because they haven't done anything different with their days every single day. If you want to change your life, you have to change your day. It's like Einstein says, to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results is insanity. Your life isn't going to change unless you change. You have the ability to change your life. And the crazy thing is you actually have the ability to change your brain. Even if you're an old dog, we can teach you new tricks. There's something called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity means your brain will actually be able to change. You can change your brain through work and through repetition. You can create a new version of you if you just start today and work at it for the next month, two months, three months, six months, one year, you can be a completely different person, a completely different version of yourself. It's called neuroplasticity. Your brain changes by doing different things. If you do the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, your brain doesn't change at all throughout the day. But if you do something different every single day and you push yourself out of your comfort zone every single day, your brain, your mind, your comfort zone will expand. I always say the brain is like a plastic bag. If you pull a plastic bag, it will never go back to the same size. It will always be the new size that you pulled it to. It's not like a rubber band, where if you pull a rubber band, it goes back to where it was. Your brain is like a plastic bag. If you pull a plastic bag, it will never go back to the same size that it was before. And through neuroplasticity, the new things that you do makes new neural connections inside of your brain, which means that there's new thoughts, new patterns, new feelings that come up from that. Your brain doesn't change though, unless you do something different. Do something different, hang out with different people. Take a different way to work. Stop talking to the same people. Uh, start talking with new people at work. Start reading new books. Start eating at different places. Eat different types of food. Don't go home and make the exact same thing and watch the exact same shows. If you don't change, your brain will not change. If you change your habits, all of the things you do throughout the day, your brain will start to change. And that's the amazing thing about the human brain that people don't realize. That's, if I'm being honest with you, that's actually what my entire course is about that's coming out, is literally how to change your brain how to change it from this is who I am and this is my brain to this is who I want to be and this is the brain that I'm gonna to need to have in order to create that. It's called neuroplasticity. So the only way to actually go through and create a new version of yourself is to change your habits, your traits, the things you do throughout the day. That will then change your brain because you're changing the things that you're doing. You're creating a new version of yourself, a new brain, new neural connections, all of that. If you change your brain, you change your thoughts. If you change your thoughts, you change your feelings. If you change your feelings, your feelings will either make you take action or not take action. Because if you don't feel good, you don't take action. If you feel great, you take action towards what it is that you want. So your thoughts create your feelings. Your brain creates your thoughts, your thoughts create your feeling, your feelings create your action, and your action will create results. And results are what change your life. If you get better results, your life gets better. If you get the same results, your life stays the same. If you get worse results, your life never changes. So in order for you to create the life that you want to, to destroy the little voice that's inside of your head, you have to go through it. The obstacle is the way. Next time that little voice pops inside of your head, you've got to go through it. When it tells you not to work out, you've got to work out. When it says not to make the bed, you've got to make the bed. When it says not to make the phone calls, you've got to make the phone calls. When it tells you not to go up and ask that pretty girl out, you've got to go up and ask that pretty girl out. You've got to do every single thing that your brain tells you not to do, and you'll be outside of your comfort zone, outside of your comfort zone, outside of your comfort zone, outside of your comfort zone. And then you realize, looking back, that your comfort zone is massively expanded from where it was. And when your comfort zone expands, you expand. And your capabilities expand, your life expands, your results expand, and you're in a completely different situation six months, a year, five years, 10 years than you are right now. But it doesn't happen unless you take that little voice inside of your head and go through it. Because that little voice is showing you what it is that you need to work on but you have to pay attention to that little voice inside of your head. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Bring, bring, bring. Hello. You're beautiful. You're smart. You're funny. You're successful. You're a hard worker. You're a great friend. You're supportive. I love you. I will literally be here forever. How many times have you not been there for yourself?